Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel on Feynman Integration. Today I'm going to be re-deriving the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign. Um, we're going to be using three tools. Uh, the limit definition of a derivative, the limit definition of a partial derivative, and this little thing right here, which uh, I, I wrote it this way, it just says that the limit of a sum is equal to the sum of the limits. Uh, basically, if you add up a bunch of stuff, um, and take the limit individually, like you take the limit of a sub 1, limit of a sub 2, limit of a sub 3, um, and then add them all up, it'd be the same thing as taking a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, and then taking the limit afterwards. So that's all that that says, and you learn that pretty early on in a, uh, in a calculus course. Um, but let's just get started. So um, the first thing we need to uh, kind of comprehend is that <clears throat> this is true. If you take a definite integral of a function of x and t from a to b and integrate it with respect to x, you'll get a function of t. Um, you know, it, it, because when you're taking a definite, uh, when you're taking a definite integral, you end up plugging in constant values for, for, for your x's, leaving you nothing but t's. Um, I'll give a, a quick example. Let's say that we wanted to take the integral from 0 to 1 of tx dx. Well, that would be equal to uh, tx squared over 2 from 0 to 1, which would equal t over 2, which is a function of t. Um, and that will work every time because you end up like, like you end up plugging in values for your x, um, leaving you with nothing but t's. So that's that's why that would be true. All right. So, what if we wanted to take a derivative with respect to t of that function right there? Well, let's just plug it into our limit definition of a derivative. So, our f prime of t would equal the limit as h approaches 0 of our function of t plus h, which would be the integral from a to b of f of x comma t plus h um, minus the integral from a to b of f of x. I'm sorry, f of t. I'm sorry, f of x and t. And I'm leaving out the, the dx just to, to save room. Um, and of course, this would all be over h, right? That's all it is. This, our function of t is this thing, and we're just taking f of t plus h, which is right here, minus f of t, which is right here, putting it over h and taking the limit as h goes to zero. All right. So, what next? What we're going to do um, is use the linearity of integrals to bring these together and also the fact that with respect to x, which is what we're integrating with respect to, h is a constant and we're just going to bring it right. Basically, we could put this outside as a 1 over h. So I'll just write it. So our new f prime of t is going to be equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of, um, okay, we're going to have the integral from a to b of f of x comma t plus h minus f of x and t all over h. I'll put the dx in that time, right? Because with respect to, to x, our h is a constant, so we can just bring it right inside the integral, and we can also um, combine those two. All right, so the next thing is we're going to be using this part right here that says the limit of a sum is equal to the sum of a limit. And just understand that an integral is nothing but a sum. So this, this will apply for almost all cases. I have heard that there are cases where that is not true and I, you know, I have not ever seen anything where that is not true. Maybe uh, one of you can provide me with an example of when it wouldn't be true, when this would not be true. 
Um, but for our purposes, it's true. Um, you, you really have to work to find an example of where that would not be true. So we're just going to say for the purposes of this video that that is true. So all we got to do is push that limit right inside the integral sign. So our f prime of t is equal to the integral from a to b of the limit as h approaches zero of f of x and t plus h minus f of x and t over h dx. And this right here, that is the limit definition of a partial derivative. Um, in this case, that would be the partial with respect to t. So this is um, the partial with respect to t of f of t. And there we have it. That is the limit, I mean, that is the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign. And we'll just go ahead and write out what we've, what we've uh, shown right here. Basically, we've said that if we take the derivative with respect to t, not the partial, of an integral from a to b of f of x and t dx, that is equal to the integral from a to b of the partial with respect to t of f of x and t dx. And that's it. That's the Leibniz rule right there. That's what it says. That's what we've just shown. Um, so anyway, that's my redo of the Leibniz rule. Hope you enjoyed that.